Hi, I'm Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. On this week's video, I thought we'd take a look at how to choose wetsuit boots. I've got a couple of different pairs, so let's have a look at how you choose them. So I've got the Seaskins Legend booties, which are five mil, and these are the ones I've had for the longest. Um, they are really robust, and I think I've probably had them now coming up three years, so they are servicing me well. And my second pair is the Lomo Tri-X Swim Socks. You might be wondering why I've got two sets of wetsuit boots. Well, it's because I'm really mindful of biosecurity. So I like to make sure that my kit has been washed and thoroughly dried before I go swimming again. So naturally at this time of year, that can mean waiting a really long time for your stuff to dry out. Uh, I do have a method of drying them out and I've made a little video about that, which I'll link below. When looking for a pair of wetsuit boots, I'm really interested in how much of the top of my foot they cover and how far up the ankle they come. What I like about my faithful seaskins, which have lasted me such a long time so far, is that they've got a rubberized base and that comes right up and over the toes. I'm hopeful you can see that. I'll come a bit closer. Um, so that gives a little bit more structure to the base and allows me to walk over kind of pebbly foreshores, which I've got locally. I wouldn't want to walk a long way in them, but it certainly provides me with a little bit of protection from what's underfoot, which is one of the main reasons I like to wear things on my feet, aside from heat retention. The other thing is they come up really nice and high on my ankle. And I find that it's this five mils is really nice and thick and they are really pretty warm. I'd say that when you, because they don't have a gasket at the top, so they're just straight up tube at the top, that can have um, water coming in. So I'm really careful not to stretch the top. And that's a bit of a game when it comes to getting them off. Again, I've made a video about that, which I'll link below. There's quite a few different methods. You don't need to struggle and give up on it. I'm sure I've got a method for you. This flat ending though, without a gasket, means that I don't get a pinch point if I put them underneath a wetsuit. So if I go on an exploratory swim, then I'll often wear these with the uh, sturdy bottoms and, um, and know where it's gonna pinch and get uncomfortable when I put another layer of wetsuit just over the top. So these tend to keep me really nice and warm and I can stay in for quite a long time with a wetsuit on, with them on, and be really comfortable. over to the Lomo Tri-X swim sock. I bought these out of curiosity really because I've got the Lomo Tri-X swim gloves which you'll have heard me bark on about a lot because I love them. My hands stay so nice and warm in them and fairly dry to be honest. So I was thinking probably be the same thing with the uh, with the socks. Granted sock doesn't necessarily say lots of foot protection but what it's got on the bottom if I come in close you might see can see where it says Lomo lots of times on here. So this is like a non-slip surface and it's still completely neoprene and wiggly and what I would say from wearing it is that it does provide me with some protection from uh, kind of hopping over the pebbles much better than being barefoot but it isn't as sturdy as a as a rubberized foot. Walking in, I don't want to walk very far in them. So this sort of distance across the pebbles, that's fine, but I'm not gonna walk any distance in them. Another thing that I found a bit funny about them is that rather than coming in shoe sizes, they cover three shoe sizes. So, and I'm at the top end of the size for this one. However, they fit nicely. The only thing is, they've got a little bit of a weird shape. Can you see, it's kind of almost a triangle uh, and, um, there's quite a bit of extra material here over my foot, but the gasket at the top, this bit here, where it comes in and it's got a little rubberized um, uh, part to it, that does stop the water coming in. So although I've got a little bit of extra flappy, it, it doesn't really, uh, flappy material, it doesn't really make any difference to how they feel when you're swimming in them. What I'll do is I will show you these on and actually, um, when I go for a swim tomorrow, I think I'm going to wear one of each so that I can really give a good comparison back to back. And you'll be able to see then. Um, I guess what I already know when I wear them 
but I've never worn one of each. So it'll be interesting to see then if I have a favorite out of them. There is another type of neoprene um, shoe that you can get and lots of the uh, sports superstores sell them and indeed in the Isle of Dreams in both Aldi and Lidl I have seen them. They tend to have um, just um, a, a slightly rubberized sole to them uh, but they only come up to the base of the ankle so they kind of form a hoop around, if you imagine this is my foot, a kind of a hoop here so they're a little bit more like slippers than actual booties. Um, I haven't gone for them because I haven't needed them uh, but I'm sure they will provide plenty of underfoot cover for when you're walking over stuff um, but not so much of the bit that I look for which is where it covers up the ankle to keep the to, uh, to maximize the warmth really. To my delight this morning I woke up to it actually snowing. That's something that's really really rare on the south coast of the UK. So I got myself up I was already going for a swim anyway, but super delighted it was swimming. Super delighted that it was uh, snowing. Uh, but now it's sleeting, which is really pretty disappointing. But at least there's still a bit of slush on the floor. So uh, to those that are getting some nice snow, I love those scenes. Wish I was in a ski resort, uh, obviously that's not happening this year. Um, but I'll make the most of it and I'll see if I can catch a little bit of wintry scenes on camera. more industrial backdrop to my swim today but you'll be pleased to hear that I'll be using my toe float and I'll be swimming just just off the beach here so I won't be any further out than the end of here I don't think and just heading over towards the rocks up just up there so what I'm doing is swimming parallel to the beach as I said I won't be in for long but I also don't want to cause anyone any alarm or a fright. I am going to wait to get in though until they've moved this big boat here over towards the turning circle which is over in front of that big boat because I presume it's heading out. If you look there is a lot of wash coming off the side um, of, with the tugs pushing it along. Um, I don't want to get involved in anything too wild. All I want to do is have a little bob about and a float in the water just here. close of my foot that's coming up so look away if you don't like feet uh, but I'm just going to show you the bit I'm trying to keep warm um, and my reasoning behind it so on my foot all of these veins and things I want to keep those covered and in and around in and around my ankle as well to try to keep the heat in so here we go, we've got, uh, I've got two boots on, I've got the sea skins one here which has got the rubberized base and I will say that standing on this snowy icy foreshore um, this one feels quite a bit warmer. This one being thinner neoprene and quite a lot more flexible um, I can feel the floor a bit better. But you can see at the top here what I mean by the gasket, this one is really held in nice and tight whereas this one quite tight I would say that the tightness is down to the thickness of the neoprene as opposed to anything else um, 
but let's take a little look how they perform in the water. Before I do get into the water though, I'm just going to show you the fit on them. Um, so this one, it mentioned that it had a funny shape, the triangle shape. Actually, now I look at it, it's not so bad, but I've definitely got extra material around the toe and foot area, as you can probably see me pinching up here. Um, so if water gets in, that could be a little bit of a balloon. Let's take a look at the fit of the other one. So the other one, as I said, was more foot shaped. And actually, I can't pinch any excess uh, material on there. So this one is a much better fit. And if water did get in, there's not huge balloony areas for it to sit. So, I'm not sure there's anything else that you need to know about them at this stage. I'll have a little go at talking while I'm in the water, but I'm not expecting to be in very long today as it is a bit perky on the temperature front. Well, it has taken me a couple of minutes there to get my gloves and stuff on. And in that time, standing on this snowy foreshore, my left foot, wearing the Lomo boot, has got considerably colder than the other one with the rubber ice foot than the sea skins. So, um, initial thoughts, and this has only shown up because I'm wearing one of each, uh, in colder temperatures standing around, then you definitely benefit from the rubberized base of a more solid sole. Anyway, getting in now. Oh, she's a little chilly today, I can tell you. Okay, getting in. Now, my right foot, the one with the sea skins on, has got water in it immediately. My left foot, still feels dry with the Lomo. Oh, my goodness me. This might be the chilliest I've felt in here. Right. Yeah, time to get in. Oh, oh yeah, that's not far off. How chilly it was in the forest. Yeah, wee! Pit burn. But we're here to look at my feet, so let's take a look at them. So at the moment, they both feel relatively okay. Uh, the bottom on my left foot is a bit chillier from having stood around. The ankle of my right foot is damper. That's pretty much all I can say at this moment. Now I did jokingly point out that I'll be using my toe float, but all joking aside, it is essential for other people on the water to be able to see you. However, I wouldn't be swimming in the path of uh, any of these big things here. If you see the one, this one just here, can only just see its bridge. I would be doubtful it can spot me. But for other water users, power boaters, personal watercraft, wind surfers, kite surfers, uh, people using wings, they all need to see us as well. So it's a really good idea. Now, what I've got in mind today is my valuables and also my um, um, changing robe. So if I got too cold and thought, wow, we, I've got to get myself out, then I'm okay because I can at least get that on and keep uh, any heat that I've still got on and start to warm up. Right back to how my feet are feeling. Time to think about it now. The one with the sea skins booty has definitely got water inside it and I can feel a little bit running underneath my sole. It 
it's not a completely unpleasant feeling but it does mean that foot now feels colder than my left foot with the thinner swim socks but the gasket at the top so that gasket is definitely keeping the moisture out from around my foot although I will report my big toe feels a little bit cold on the left foot that's more than likely down to having um, uh, stood around on the snowy pebbles though Are you managing to get yourself a bit of swimming or a bit of an outdoor fix at the moment? Let me know in the comments what you're up to. I mean, you might be cycling, you might be swimming. I don't know what you're up to, but I hope it's um, making you happy and giving you a bit of a break from the crazy times we're facing at the moment. Oh, sunshine on a snowy day. Amazing. So I'm swimming little laps up and down the beach here and I'm still within my depth, you were pleased to know. So that cheeky monkey couldn't get anywhere near me, even if it wasn't tied up. So the foot flexibility is something to think about for swimming, but actually as I'm swimming breaststroke here, I'm feeling no difference between the two. The only thing I'm feeling is that little bit of water moving around underneath the sea skin's foot. I think that my left foot with the Lomo on is marginally warmer. But as you see, I did have to have a think about that because it's a quite a close run thing. Oh, just seen a pilot boat coming along here on the side of that big boat. That kicks up an enormous wake. Could be in for a little bit of a face splash here. Or I could race the wake and get out. I really could do without a little wave breaking over my head right now because as you can see I've got my bobble hat on not my neoprene or silicone one primarily because my head felt nice and warm and I didn't want to take it off I put a little bit more of a kick in just then to give it a little bit more beans uh, swimming breaststroke <laughs> so more water came in when I kicked relatively vigorously on my right foot with the one without the gasket so that's quite interesting however if I was wearing them underneath a wetsuit it would make no odds because the water wouldn't have any chance to get in through the top in conclusion, I'm pretty happy with both pairs of um, boots that I've got. They both do a good job. They both keep my feet warm. And um, they're both pretty flexible, to be honest. Skins, I think I prefer the Lomo ones because I like the fact I don't have a lot of water swishing around inside. But with a wetsuit on, it would be six of one, half a dozen the other. When I took the two boots off, I would say there was no water at all in the Lomo one. And in the Seaskins one, there was a little bit that I poured out after I'd taken them off. The um, Lomo one, once I got my thumbs underneath the seal, was easier to get off than the Seaskins one, which are quite a bit longer, thicker neoprene, and therefore stick to your skin a little bit more. Had I taken either of them off in the water, they would have flown off. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and that if you have, you'll give it a like and drop me a comment and also click the subscribe button and don't forget to ding the bell so you know when the next one's out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.